Hey everyone, it's Anais and it's been a long time. I know I've been gone from this channel and that's mainly because I've been writing up my thesis. It takes quite a long time, I'm writing up, I'm in the final few months, so it does mean that until I finish I'm probably not going to be uploading that regularly here, but once that is done I will be back full time. But I thought it'd be a bit boring to just upload a 10 second video saying this, so I thought I would make a science themed gift guide sharing some of my favourite sciencey things that I've discovered over the past couple of years, which I'm constantly recommending to people in real life, so I might as well recommend them to you. So if you're looking to get a gift for a relative, or for your family, friends, a secret Santa, co-workers, or even for yourself, hopefully you'll find something you want here. The first item on this list is actually what inspired this video, and it's this right here. This was actually a gift I got from an edgy YouTuber, Secret Santa, and I thought, this is generally one of the most perfect gifts I have ever received. It's the name of my channel, and it is spelt in macro photography of butterfly wings up close that just happen to look like letters. And you might also notice that even though you've got repeat letters, they don't repeat the photo. So there's quite a large variety and diversity in it. But they haven't raised their prices in over 17 years. And as well as doing customised letters, they also sell posters with the whole alphabet and all of the numbers in both butterfly photos and in nature photos. And they also have a book where they also have the close-ups with the species and some poetry. Second on my list is also something you might find on your wall. Um, I'm a huge fan of prints of any kind. I recently found this shop on Etsy called Ojiocha Prints, and they sell vintage prints of animals, insects, I think even vintage maps as well. I found them trying to find an incredibly specialist print for my supervisor because he was leaving Oxford, and they sold it. He absolutely loved it. In fact, everyone in the lab really liked it, to the point that I went back to the shop and decided to order one for myself, and they were ever so kind to gift this to me. Um, this is an elephant hawk moth. I don't study these myself, but they are one of the species that we would study when looking at insect flight. And honestly, the elephant hawk moth has one of the prettiest patterns moths have, in my opinion. And they were also very, very kind to offer the discount code CURIOUS. So if you want a percentage off your purchase, if you order before the 15th of December, just in time for Christmas, then you can get these prints at a slightly cheaper rate as a little gift from me to you. On the topic of art, visuals and science, I'm going to recommend two of my favourite photography books. The first one is the Planet Earth 2 book, satisfyingly thick, full of beautiful, colourful pictures and photos from Planet Earth 2, as well as plenty of information. Mine in particular is signed by Mike Gunton. And as a fun fact, the cover of this is actually made by a fellow YouTuber, Don Burgess from the channel Everything, who also works with the BBC. And the other one is by cameraman Doug Allen, who recently released Freeze Frame. He gave a talk here in Oxford. Doug Allen has filmed for all kinds of documentaries for the BBC Discovery. He specialises in underwater photography and has done a lot of work at both the Arctic and the Antarctic. So although I'm not someone who really enjoys the cold that much, he does have many fascinating stories behind all of the different pictures he took. So if you're into specialist photography or just simply learning new stories about expeditions and exploring new areas, I think you will really enjoy his book. Continuing on with the theme of books, I'm going to recommend some of my more favourite traditional books. In the Department of Science Fiction, I recommend Genesis. It's not the Bible, it is by Bernard Beckett. And honestly, I think this might well be my favourite book. I'm not going to spoil any of the plot, I will just say that if you like 1984 or Brave New World style books, then you're going to absolutely love this and you should just get it. Next up, there are two more non-fiction books. One which I really wanted to get my hands on is Animals in Translation. I actually got this second hand from Powell's in Portland. Uh, Animals in Translation is written by Temple Grandin. She has autism and she cares a lot about animal welfare, so it might be quite ironic that she actually works to research for slaughterhouses to find the most humane ways to look after the animals before putting them down. So she draws upon her experiences as being a person with autism and also several aspects of the research that she's done. It's a really fascinating read, so I think most people will probably enjoy this very, very much. And from this book, I learnt about this other book here, which is called A Man Without Words by Susan Schaller, forward by Oliver Sacks. This is the story of 
a deaf man who's grown up without language. He's not been taught how to speak. He's not been taught any sign language. He's not been taught how to read. So she's got the challenge of trying to teach him sign language or to communicate with him as someone who's grown up without language, but does still quite clearly have a cognitive grasp of what's going around him in some ways. I really, really recommend it. It took a little bit of searching in local bookshops to find this one, but I have left an Amazon link in the description below. Moving on, I'm going to share with you something that has had me obsessed for the past year, and that is the Vsauce Curiosity Box. I don't subscribe to any subscription boxes, I'm usually a bit sceptical of them, uh, but this one is different, of course. Um, I've signed up since the beginning, still haven't really been unhappy with any of the boxes. They're, I think they are about $40. I've got the annual subscription, which I think is a little bit cheaper. And I have left a referral code down below. I do get a discount when you use it, but you get a discount as well. Uh, so the Curiosity Box, each one comes jam-packed with stuff. I have done a few unboxings on my second channel and I live streamed opening the latest box last week and I'm going to be doing the next one very soon as well. So you can get an idea of what kind of things you can get in there. There's always a t-shirt, there's usually other forms of apparel such as a hat or a badge. There are also lots of little sciencey decoration things. So for instance, this came in the last one sort of demonstrates the principles of magnetism. Uh, one of my favourite things that came with it was this microscope. It has a 90% magnification um, and it also comes with a few slides. So each one comes with lots of little curiosities with an explanation of how to use them. I know there have been gyroscopes and books, actually on the topic of books, uh, Mary Roach's Packing for Mars was in the Curiosity Box from last Christmas and is also on my list of favourite science books. I don't have it here with me, I took it home to Spain, but it's basically about science and research about going to space. Really, really interesting. There's also been photo books about seeds and flowers. So overall, I would genuinely and wholeheartedly recommend this box to anyone who does want to make a bigger investment on stuff that arrives every few months. Next up, I would not be an animal flight student if I did not recommend a drone to you. I know there are all manner of fancy drones out there, but I am going to recommend this one. This is the Chearson drone. It was until quite recently the smallest drone out on the market. The smallest one now is probably a couple of millimetres smaller than this. You might be thinking, why is this my favourite drone? It's pretty small, it doesn't have a camera, it doesn't do too many fancy things. And that's honestly why I like it. You don't need a drone license. You can fly it indoors. It's not too noisy. It's quite discreet. It's quite hard to break. It comes with spare propellers. So if you lose one, then you can just pop some new ones on. I think they're quite pretty. And they also charge up via USB. They take about 15 minutes to charge. You get about five minutes flight. The controller is very simple. There's no connecting it to smartphones. You can just connect it all up. As long as everything is charged, then it's ready to go. And to me, the simplicity of it is the beauty. Next on my list is a board game, Evolution Random Mutations. I spent a very long time trying to find this board game, specifically this edition. It's actually originally a Russian game, then it was translated into English in this edition. And I think there's now a more colourful one, which is the only one I've been able to find online, and which is the one that's linked. All I can say about this game is the first couple of times you play, it will take a bit of getting used to and reading the rules, but if you're a biologist, you will greatly appreciate the level of biological accuracy that's in it. And last but not least is something that I don't physically own, but I've seen used very successfully in workshops. I've used it as well, and it works exceptionally well to teach and introduce people to coding for the first time. And that is Little Bits. It combines Electronics with coding is very creative, it's very original. I will say it is probably the most expensive item I'm recommending in today's video, so it's probably best suited for a classroom environment if you're an educator and you want to have a demo um, for the children in your classroom, uh, or if you want to get it as a big Christmas gift to your teenagers. I've seen them used very, very successfully, and honestly, I would have very gladly grown up with those, so. <laughs> Anyway, that's it pretty much from me today. I would love to know what caught your interest and if there's any other things that you would recommend or you think I might enjoy, because I'm always on the lookout for new things. 
And I also wanted to say, if you remember, I said I was on a game show in South Africa a while back. That is airing tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this. Sunday, 3rd of December, 7pm GMT on Discovery Science in the UK and some European channels. I'm sorry, United States and non-European countries, um, but unfortunately that's where Discovery is airing it. If you follow me on Twitter, I have posted several links and schedules that I've been given of when the episode is airing. And I know it's going to be rebroadcast a few times as well, so I'm announcing the premiere, but it will appear a few more times, so if you can't watch it today, that's also fine. And that is everything from me now. As always, thank you so much for watching me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.